Hi guys, I'm Josh and welcome to Run TV. Over the past few weeks, the crew at Joggers World and Sportitude have come together and we've been thinking about ways in which we can help you out during this time. Now we're all runners, we get it, we understand the benefits of being outside and moving, especially during a time like this. So we came up with this idea of Run TV. Now whether you're just starting out running, you're getting back into running or you've been running for a number of years, it doesn't matter. What we aim to do here is to give you a whole heap of practical tips to help you enjoy the sport of running and achieve your running goals, no matter how big or small they might be. So to do so, in addition to the crew at Joggers World and Sportitude, we've assembled a whole team of experts. So in the coming weeks, you're going to hear from exercise physiologists, sports psychologists, running coaches, personal trainers, yoga instructors, uh, and even nutritionists, just to name a few. And each and every episode, we aim to have a special guest on the show. And they're going to give you a bit of an insight with regards to how they've incorporated running into their chosen sport. And every week, you're going to uh, lean on or hear from, sorry, the team at Joggers World and Sportitude. And we're going to give you some little tips and secrets so you can continue to enjoy the sport of running. And also give you some little insight in regards to what's new and available in, this, in the field of running. So whether it's shoe reviews... Uh, accessories, clothing, apparel, gadgets and gizmos, it doesn't matter if it has anything to do with running, we'll review it and bring it to you. So, without further ado, we'd like to dive straight into our very first guest on the Run TV. So, it gives us great pleasure to welcome Catherine Chloe Hesse to the show. Catherine is a guru, a running expert, um, a great runner herself, and she is the founder of the Run Club Adelaide. So, Catherine, welcome along to Run TV. My name is Catherine Kohesi and I'm currently the leader of the Run Club Adelaide. Um, so I guess to start off with, um, I'll give you a little bit of intro of myself and of the Run Club. Um, so I was grew up here in Adelaide, um, went to school at Loretto College, got involved in a kind of a whole variety of um, school sports growing up and then got a little bit more competitively involved in the running side of things in probably grade 8, grade 9. I joined the Adelaide Harriers running club in the city and was coached by Dave Patterson out there for a while. Um, Pado, as he's well known as, and that was super fun, got me um, you know, very much involved in the more elite kind of distance running um, scene of Adelaide and that was awesome. Um, from there, started racing in 5k, 10k um, road races, dabbled in a little bit of um, track racing, um, even a little bit of mountain running as well with that one. In grade 11, I, um, grade 11 and grade 12, did a whole lot of kind of racing locally, nationally. Um, I got recruited um, for college in America and I signed a national letter of intent in 2020, early 2014 um, for the University of San Francisco, cross country and track and field team under um, Helen Lehman Winters. So she was my coach over there. Um, so I graduated um, school here at Loretto end of 2013 and moved over to San Francisco in the middle of 2014. So I started um, full semester over there in 2014. Um, so I was running quite competitively that whole time. Um, unfortunately, um, got a few injuries my first couple of years um, in a couple of stress fractures. And so I ended up dropping back off the running and in my final two years of college, just kind of focused on the academic side of things and really took the pedal off um, the competitive and distance running to kind of let my body recover and heal. Um, so I guess overall I got a really good experience of the whole college life as both an athlete and as a student, so that was awesome. Um, graduated in 2018, my degree was in um, psychology, neuroscience and sociology. So yeah, I graduated in 2018 and moved back home, so I moved back to Adelaide in May 2018. Um, from there, I was looking to get a job, so I got PT certified and kind of through the Adelaide, um, Adelaide fitness industry, got um, in contact you know, with Fitspace and um, Charlotte Griffin and James Chinnery. Um, from there, kind of got involved with the Run Club. So um, early days of the Run Club, it was um, focused kind of as a side, a um, little bit of a subset of the KX Pilates guys. So it gave them a little bit of a um, community run group for them to get involved with on the side of the KX um, Pilates classes. And then once the Fitspace opened as well, um, it kind of became the community run group for the Fitspace clients as well. The aim of the Run Club for me was just to get people out and running and to get people 
um, maybe meeting new people, meeting new people to run, but also to kind of see that everyone's coming from different running backgrounds and everyone wants something different out of their run. So whether you're coming out for a 2K walk, run around the block, or whether you're coming out for a 20K, you know, sweaty session on a Tuesday night, it's totally up to you. My fundamentals of running would be to take out everything that makes it scary and complex and overwhelming and really just focus on lacing up your shoes, maybe grabbing a run buddy that you're, you know, socially distanced with or living at home with, um, keeping a safe distance apart, keeping your hygiene, all those factors of course, but just heading out on a run. So just don't think about it, don't look at your watch, don't look at your phone, try and leave your headphones if you can and just focus on, you know, heading out on the block and whatever happens, happens. And I think that for a lot of people that's a really, really good starting point and over time, you will find that you can run a little bit faster. You can, you know, stop fewer times around the block and it does become a little bit easier. Try not to build up too quickly. Really let your body um, have the time to adapt and build up um, to the distances you are working on and try not to jump straight into, okay, I really want to run four times a week. If you're at the moment running only once a week or not really much at all, then I would recommend kind of taking some time to, before you build up to those four times a week. If anyone does have any any questions or anything, um, feel free to message through um, either myself personally or the Run Club Instagram page. Um, but yeah, happy running guys, stay safe out there and we'll see you soon. Bye. Thank you so much for that Catherine, a great insight into you as a runner and also the Run Club Adelaide, so I appreciate your time. Our next guest on the show is a psychologist. Now, Tim Dancy has worked across a number of different fields in regards to sports psychology. He's got a great background, um, and he's gonna give us a little bit of an insight to the benefits of running and moving during this time. So it gives us great pleasure to welcome Tim to the show. Thank you very much, Tim. Thanks, Josh. My name's Tim Dancy, and I'm a psychologist working here in Adelaide. And uh, today what I thought I would do is talk to you about how we can look after ourselves and support each other through this very challenging time, uh, particularly when we're self-isolated and uh, our routines have completely been thrown out of whack. So what I'm gonna try and do is give you some ideas of little things that we can do just to help uh, look after ourselves, but also support people around us as well. So I think obviously, we're talking a running program, and, and I have to say, exercise is, I believe, one of the most important things we can do. Now, I've got to say, I am not a natural runner. Um, however, that doesn't mean I can't get outside and walk and do little jogs um, and certainly get the heart rate going. So I think what we've got to look at and remember is by getting up and active, what we're doing is we trigger the release of endorphins in our brains, and that's a natural occurring chemical, which makes us feel good about ourselves. So um, obviously running is a great way to get fit and make that happen, but I'm actually a really big advocate for lots of walking as well. And we're very lucky here in South Australia where we live, we have wonderful bush walks and uh, wonderful parks and beaches which we can walk in. So have a look at some of these things and um, online and, and find some really nice walks, obviously, common sense, social distance, all these sorts of things we've got to bear in mind as well. Um, another thing I think is very important is um, looking after, as I said, looking after ourselves and trying to keep ourselves happy because with winter coming along, uh, it can be quite a flat time. And I, I, I'm certainly noticed in my practice that um, during the winter months, we, we tend to um, hibernate a little bit more and I find people do get a bit flat. I call it the winter blues. Um, we miss the sunshine. And as we're heading into winter in Australia, I think it's really important we put a few little things into place that can um, we can all do quite easily to help ourselves. And I call these the five secrets of being happy. Now, obviously the first one is exercise. And, and I'm, I'm a massive advocate for exercise. I was a PE teacher in my former life before being a psychologist. And uh, I, I just can't express enough how much uh, or how important exercise is. And it's not about going out and running marathons. And that's the thing I think we all need to understand. What it's about is finding your level and just slowly building up to it. I was talking to my brother recently, who was saying since the um, self-isolation and lockdown, he's actually just started walking and he's just loving it, absolutely loving it. So uh, exercise of any shape or form is very important. Be creative. This uh, weights we can do with milk cartons and wonderful, wonderful programs online that we can look at and follow. 
Uh, personally, we're doing a family boot camp where we all get together and we have people from all around the world joining us on their iPads. And um, we do push-ups, sit-ups, burpees, lots of um, different activities, um, strength-based, aerobic-based. So get your exercise programs going. I, I personally, I don't think there's an excuse for not doing it. Um, if anything, we do have a little bit more time on our hands, so it's a great time to get a good fitness program going. So that's the first thing about being happy. Second thing I encourage people to do is give. A uh, great believer in doing little things for others without asking anything in return. So by that, be the person who does something kind for your next door neighbor. Um, and I also think it's a wonderful time to acknowledge the people who are supporting us and um, lots of pleases and lots of thank yous, lots of compliments. So do these little things for others without asking anything in return. And it's amazing how we, we feel good about ourselves in doing that. Find positive people to spend time with. And, and this can be a challenge. We all have friends, and I call them the dementors, who seem to suck the life out of us. What we're gonna do is find the people who give us energy, make us smile, make us happy. And, and you just stop thinking about some of the challenges that we have, the stresses we might have. Um, and we just enjoy their company. Now with social distance, this is harder. So we do this through our online platform. Or go, go for a walk, go for a jog with these people and sit and have what I call an SDC, a social distance coffee. And uh, But find the positive people. Take time to learn new things. Great opportunity. I've, I've actually got my guitar out and started playing my guitar again, which has been fantastic. Uh, learn how to cook something new, grow something in the garden, learn a second language. Learn new skills, learn to play a new card game, a new board game. Uh, in our house, we're playing a lot of Catan, a fantastic game. The problem is I think it's sold out, but have a look at that one. But learn something new. And finally, this is one of the biggest challenges. Take notice of the little things. Um, I'm sitting in my office in Walkerville, and it's a beautiful day outside. It's just such a lovely day. So to walk outside and go, God, what a great day. No, appreciate the little things. Take notice of the little things. Don't neglect the little things and really work hard at acknowledging those little things that make up a really good day. Uh, all the things that are happening that are good around us rather than all the negative things that can be happening. So practice those five things, lots of exercise, keep yourself active, and if you are having any difficulty or are concerned about how you are going, reach out and talk to someone. All right, there's lots and lots of people to help you and uh, to make sure we all get through this together. So. Keep running, look after yourselves, and uh, make sure you look after people around you. So thanks, Josh, and I hope I will talk to you again soon. Bye. Thank you very much for that, Tim. We really appreciate it. Now, you're spot on. There's a lot of magnificent places here to walk and jog around Adelaide. I mean, we've got the beautiful uh, coastline, we've got some wonderful trails, and even the linear path, for example, along the Torrent. So guys, get out and explore it. Now, before you head out the door, you probably want to get your shoelaces tied up correctly. And yes, I know you're probably sitting there rolling your eyes at the moment saying, yeah, we all know how to tie up our shoelaces, but there is a couple of little tricks that will help you ensure that you are nice and comfortable inside your shoe because every foot shape is different and every shoe structure is different as well. So to give you a couple of little pointers to ensure you are nice and comfortable, we're going to head out to Reese, and Reese is going to give you those little tricks. Thanks, Reese. Over to you, mate. Hey guys, Reese from Joggers World here. Today I'm going to talk to you about some lacing techniques that can change the feel of a shoe completely. Firstly, what I'm going to do with this shoe is actually remove all the laces and actually use a bright yellow one so you can see what I'm actually doing. So now that I've got the laces out, first thing I'm going to talk about is actually creating a little bit of space in the forefoot. So some people need a little bit more room than what the shoe provides with the lacing standard. So what you can actually do is instead of starting the lacing on that first row of eyelets, is actually move up one. You can start it a little bit higher. What that does, it actually pr promotes a little bit more movement, a little bit more space in that forefoot, um, and actually create a little bit more freedom. So essentially, that's what I'm gonna do. So starting with my bright yellow lace, starting right at the, the second eyelet up. And of course, we want our laces to be nice and even. So join the two ends together before you pull it tight, and then pull it through and it's nice and even. And then we just lace it as you would normally, one side to the other. So I'm gonna stop there because the next one I'm gonna show you is actually if you do get a feel a little bit of pressure on top of the foot, or if you've got a high arch and you feel some pressure through the tongue here, is actually create a little lacing window. So instead of crossing the laces over straight over to the next hole like you would normally, 
you can actually go straight into the eyelet above it. So actually creating a little bit of a window. So you see what I mean as I get to the next row. So cross over, and then cross over. So you can see there's a little bit of a window here. So if you do feel a bit of pressure on top of the foot, this is a great way to actually reduce that pressure and still have tension through the midfoot. Then we keep going up the laces, and then we head up to the next, the next technique that I want to talk about. So the next te technique is actually designed to lock down the heel. So essentially, if you feel that you get a bit of heel slip in the back of the shoe, uh, the first thing you can actually do is actually cross the laces over to that last hole. So that might be enough just to secure the heel. Just like that. And the way that works is because if you look at the way the, la the lacing actually runs, the eyelets run up one direction, up this way, up the, up the shoe, then that last hole is actually at a different angle. It actually rolls down. So it actually creates more tension, even by itself, just by lacing it up to that last hole. That might secure your heel. If it's not enough, then simply what we do is we take the laces back out of that last hole, and instead of crossing it over, we go straight in to the same side. Just like that. And you can see how that's created a little loop. We'll get to that in a sec. So we do that on the other, on the other side as well. There's been lots of different names this has been called. The runner's lace, the heel lock, rabbit ears. What we can actually do then is instead of tying it straight up, you cross those laces into that last hole. Just like that. And then we work backwards and forwards. And you can see that it creates a nice, secure lockdown. Now, all that does is actually creates a little bit more tension on the tongue and pushes your heel back into the heel counter and actually reduces any slip. That should be enough to hold you, to hold you nice and tight. A couple of other rules to think about when lacing up your running shoes. One rule that I would stick to is making sure that there's actually tension on each row that's actually securing your foot on top of the midsole. And the last thing I would actually do before tying the shoe up tight is actually just to give your heel a little bit of a tap into the ground. That actually secures, especially with a new shoe, that actually secures your heel into the back of the shoe and then tie your shoe up. It'll just make sure that your heel is back and down in the shoe and your foot's getting locked down on top of that midsole. So, there you go. There's three different lacing techniques that can create a little bit more comfort and security. So by creating a little bit more space in that forefoot, if you need that little bit of movement, reducing pressure on top of the foot, and bear in mind, this window can be placed anywhere, so you can actually choose which hole you need to skip. And then the last one, you have two techniques that you can actually create a little bit of lockdown on that heel if you need be. Thanks, guys. All right, guys, that's a wrap for episode one of Run TV. We hope you enjoyed your time with us. Now, if you've got any questions or comments on any of the topics that we've covered today, please drop it in this comments field below. Um, and we're also open to any ideas or suggestions. So if there's anything that you want us to cover in, in future episodes, please just let us know. We're all ears and we'd love to help you out as much as we possibly can. But until next time, stay safe, be kind to each other and get out and move. Happy running, guys. We'll see you soon.